মন্ত্রা গুরু আ জট শিখ গুরু গণ তার চরণে আগে করিয়া বন্দন বন্দে আহম শ্রী গুরৌ শ্রী জ তপর গমনম শ্রী গুরু নৈষ্ণবংশ শ্রী রূপম সগর জাতম সহগন রঘনাথম ঐতম তম সজীবম সদৈরম সদম পরিজন সাহিত্যম কৃষ্ণ চৈতন্য দেব শ্রী রাধা কৃষ্ণ পাদন সহগন ললিত শিবিশাখম বিতম মঞ্চকল্পতুরুভ্যশ্চ কৃপ সিন্ধু বেব চাপতিত নাম পাবনে বৈষ্ণবেব নমো নমহ অম জ্ঞানতিমরন্দস জ্ঞানঞ্চন শলাকায় চুক্ষুষোন্মলিত জ্ঞানচস্ম শ্রী গুরুবে নম নমো বিষ্ণুপারায় কৃষ্ণপৃষ্ঠায় বুটলে শ্রীমতি ভক্তি বেদান্ত স্বামী নমনে নমস্তে সারস্বতী দেবে গৌরবাণী প্রচারিণে নির্বিশেষ সন্ধ্যবাণী পশ্চাতারিণে In our previous lesson, lesson 9, we were discussing chapters 15 and 16 of the Nectar Devotion. We presented an overview of the process of Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti. We described the position of the Ragatmakas, the eternal associates of the Lord, perfected uh, beings, devotees, perfected, exemplifying the various r- roshas in uh, Bhakti Rosh in the Vatsalya, Mudurja, Shakya, Dasha, Rosh, and uh, the Raga Megabhaktas are uh, exemplified. And uh, in Vrindavan, we can see their devotional sentiment and hear about it. And Raganuga is the practice of cultivating a sentiment similar. And when we hear, actually, the, the example of the Goshamis themselves, that Gopi Bhava, Rasham Ritadbi, Laharira, Kurorara, Magnura, Mahur, Pande Rupa Shanatano, Ragu Yago, Shijiva Gopala Go. That the Gobi Bhav, Roshamritadbi, Rosha Amrit, the, the, the flavors, the nectarian flavors are Abdi, Roshamritadbi, of the ocean, of the Gopi's flavor of loving Krishna. Kalula Magno, Kalula, the waves in that ocean, Magno, uh, entering into, uh, entering within, Muhur again and again, the Goshamis of Vrindavan were merging again and again, diving again deeply into the ocean of rasa, of nectarian mallows, of the flavor of the gopis' love for Krishna. Radha Krishna Gunasmitir Muduri Anandena Shamohito, remembering the qualities of Radha and Krishna. So in this way, the, uh, the, the, the Goshamis were, were practicing Ragmag Bhakti in the Modurja uh, Rosh, in Vrindavan, and similarly, the followers of Rupa Goswami also will similarly develop a similar sentiment of loving Krishna, uh, following the uh, following the example of the Goswamis of Vrindavan. The Rupa Nugas generally are in the Moduruja Bhav. And we were discussing the relevance the, <laughs> of the practice of Raga Marg Bhakti for ISKCON. And Prabhupada was mentioning this is the goal, this is para bhakti. And that when one is completely uh, liberated from material attachment, material pollution, then one is eligible to cultivate these sentiments, having realized his eternal relationship with Krishna and Vrindavan, and identified with the particular Raga Marg Bhakti and serving Krishna according to their sentiment. And externally demonstrating the same standard behaviors of the Vaidhi Sadaka. In this lesson, we'll be discussing chapters 17 to 19. That's Bhava and Prema Bhakti. Ecstatic love of Godhead and uh, love of God. Prabhupada defines Bhav Bhakti in his opening paragraph to the chapter 17, Ecstatic Love. 
And when we read such a definition, we, we can only be, uh, uh, conclude that such a definition could only be written by a person who themselves is a Bahav Bhakta. Let's read Prabhupada's definition. By the process of executing regulative devotional service, one is actually elevated onto the transcendental stage beyond the modes of nature. At that time, one's heart becomes illuminated like the sun. The sun is far above the planetary systems, and there is no possibility of its being covered by any kind of cloud. Similarly, when a devotee is purified like the sun, from his pure heart there is diffusion of ecstatic love, which is more glorious than the sunshine. Prabhupada continues, he's summarizing Rupa Goswami's verses, to clarify in the previous chapters, the symptoms of devotional service were explained, along with instruction. The, the symptoms were the definition of pure devotional service, anya bilashita shunya jnana karmadi anabhita anukulena krishnanu shilana bhakti utham utham bhakti shuddha bhakti ananda bhakti pure devotional service so the the symptoms that definition and the characteristics and their respective stages at which they develop were all explained along with instructions as how we may execute devotional service with our present senses and that was chapters 2 to 14 which were describing vaidi and raganuga sadhana bhakti wherein one's mind one senses smelling the flower garlands and uh, hearing the Krishna Katamrit and with the legs walking to the temple, with the, with the eyes seeing the deity of the Lord, with the uh, tongue tasting the Mahaprasad Bhajan, etc., etc., circumambulating the temple. So in this way, with our present senses, we gra and by practicing in this way, we gradually rise to the platform of ecstasy in spontaneous love. And uh, this is the goal of sadhana bhakti, awakening real affection for Sri Hari, which is dormant in the heart, which has become covered over as a result of our materialistic consciousness. As, as Mahabrabhu explained to Srila Sh Ishar Puri, after receiving the Harinam initiation and the Vaishnava Diksha mantra, Kiva mantra dilogo shai, kiva tarbo, jopati jopati mantra, korele pago. What kind of mantra have you given me, Goshai? What's its strength? Jopati jopati mantra. By chanting that mantra, korele pago, I become crazy. I become crazy. And hearing this, Srila Ishwapuri Prabhupada was very pleased. Bhalo. Hello, Pyale Tumi Ponam Purushar. It's very wonderful, my child, that you have attained this ultimate goal of life. Tomar Preme Eta Yami Ho Ilan Kritato. And I've become, I, I'm, I'm obligated now. Ami Kritato, Tomar Preme Eta, seeing the development of love of Godhead that you have achieved. And then Ishwar Puri responded to the inquiry of Godhari. Kiba Mantra Dilo. Goshai, Kibatar Bal. What mantra have you given me, Goshai? What is its strength? Ishar Puri Prabhupada, he re replied that Hari Krishna Maha Mantra Jai to Shabhav Jai Jape Tari Krishna Ubajai Bhav. The Hari Krishna Maha Mantra Jai to Shabhav, the very nature of the Hari Krishna Maha Mantra. Jai Jape, whoever chants, Tari Krishna Ubajai Bhav. For them, Tare, Krishna, unto Krishna, Upajaye, there is an awakening of bhav, feelings. So this is the very nature of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Especially chanting Hare Krishna, uh, following the rules and the uh, regulations, or the practices recommended by Shurub Goshami, uh, the Vaidhi Sadhana practices. So chanting Hare Krishna, along with the Vaidhi Sadhana practices, that that Jai Jape, whoever chants, whoever practices these sadhana methods, Jai Jape, Tare Krishna Upajai Bhav, there will be, if we're practicing properly, these just like the uh, analogies that Srila Prabhupada discussed in chapters 2 and 3, just like the, the physician gives a certain prescription which will cure the patient. So if we practice the sadhana activities, 
just as Srila Rupa Goswami and Srila Prabhupada are prescribing, then in due course of time, if we continue to practice with patience, in due course of time there will be the gradual awakening of Jai Jape Tare Kishne Upajai Bhav. Bhav, Bhav Bhakti, <laughs> feelings of love of Godhead. The verse, let's read from these slides, the, the, the verse that Shura Prabhupada is examining here, written by Shura Rupa Goswami, chapter 3, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, text number 1. Shuddha Shatva Visheshatma Prema Shurangshu Shamya Bhak Ruchi Bish Chitta Marshniya Kurida Show Bhava Uchite. When devotional service is executed on the transcendental platform of pure goodness, it is like a sun ray for love of Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various tastes, and one is situated in Bhava emotion. You can see Prabhupada's opening paragraph, how he's Reflecting the different elements of this uh, verse by Shura Rupa Goswami, Prema Shura that just like a, a ray of a sun ray of love for Krishna, and Prabhupada explained that that the sun from his pure, the, the, just like the sun from the from the pure heart, there is diffusion of ecstatic love, which is more glorious than the sunshine. Shuddhashatva Visheshatma, the Lord's internal potency, Samvit Ladini, descends into the heart of the devotee. Shuddhashatva Visheshatma. This attachment is very confidentially kept by Krishna and is bestowed only upon pure devotees. Even ordinary devotees cannot have such pure attachment for Krishna. Prema Shur Angshu Shamyabhak. It's the onset of Prem. Just like a ray of sun is, is similar to the onset of the sunrise. In this connection, there's a statement in the tantras that ecstasy is the first symptom of pure love for the personality of Godhead. Shri Prabhupada comments, Chitta mashnanya kridasho bhava The softness of the heart. In that stage, one is sometimes found shedding tears or shivering. So, to summarize the definition of bhava bhakti, the Lord's internal potency, Samvit and Ladini, descends into the heart of the devotee. Bhava is the onset of Prema, and Bhava causes the heart to be softened. How to attain Bhava Bhakti? Prabhupada explains, everyone can attain that Bhava stage. There is a process. This process is described by Rupa Goswami, how to come to the Bhava stage. Bhava stage means just prior to perfection. One must come to the bhava stage. Next stage is perfection. Ne next stage is full perfection. So how to come to this bhava stage? That is, Rupa Goswami has described adoshadha. First of all, a little faith. So Rupa Goswami is explaining that, and Srila Prabhupada comments also on the top of page 132, just in the, in the third paragraph of the purport, Elevation to this stage of ecstasy can be possible in two ways. One way is by constant association with pure devotees. The other way is by special mercy of Krishna. So one can be elevated by special mercy uh, without necessarily having, having practiced any of the items of Vaidhi Sadhana. That's what the uh, example of Bhav uh, uh, by Kripa means, by mercy. Of that's the the, the uh, Kripa Siddha examples like for example uh, Mahaprabhu when he was revealing himself to Sri Thakur and uh, his family and and Mahaprabhu said that uh, if the if the Nawab comes then I, I, I will I will uh, cause all of, I will go on the boat to uh, to go Mahaprabhu explained that I will induce all of the wild elephants and the wild animals from the jungles the hogs and the horses and the, the, the uh, tigers and, and I will induce them to cry in love of Godhead and, and Mahabrabhu inquired from Shivash Thakur, do you, do you doubt me Shivash? And Shivash Thakur was, was speechless. At that time Mahabrabhu turned to the uh, niece of Shivash Thakur, her name was Narayani, who subsequently became the mother, exalted mother of Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur the author, the author of the authorized biography of Sri uh, Chaitanya Mahabrabhu, the Chaitanya Bhagavat. 
And uh, Mahabrabhu turned to Narayani, at that time she was four years old. And he said, Narayani, chant Hare Krishna and cry. And immediately hearing this order of Mahabrabhu, just by, by Rupa Goswami mentioned, just by the glance, or just by the desire of the pure devotee, bestowing through the glance, through his kindness, bestowing that full prema uh, on the, in this case, bhava prema on the living entity. And uh, she hadn't performed any sadhana practice. And uh, immediately she was crying with love of Godhead, the, the, the bhava, the softness of the heart, the tears, the shivering, calling out the name of Krishna, Narayani, as she lay on the floor. So Srila Prabhupada comments, Elevation to that stage by the special mercy of Krishna or his devotee is very rare. The purport is that one should execute devotional service rigidly in the association of devotees so that there will be certainly so that there will be certainty in raising oneself to the ecstatic position. Just like, for, for example, we could, we could consider Srila Prabhupada being on the, the Uttam platform, the highest level of Krishna consciousness, and uh, therefore having the potency to simply bestow this prema, love of Godhead, upon his disciples. However, we don't see this uh, 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 happening. Rather, uh, Srila Prabhupada, by instructing the disciples, by training them in the sadhana practice, in worship of the deity, in the regulated, regulative chanting process, in the sankirtan process, in the hearing and chanting, Prabhupada is not only delivering his disciples, but delivering the uh, humanity for generations to come. So in this way, although Srila Prabhupada had the, had the, the potency to simply bestow love of Godhead uh, 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 for, out of mercy upon an unqualified living entity who hadn't practiced sadhana, in general we don't see Srila Prabhupada doing that. And uh, in general, we should, another example Srila Prabhupada gives in this connection is that Rabindranath Tagore, actually his name was, was Tagore, but uh, he adjusted it for the, to, for the British tongue, so Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore, uh, he was given a Nobel Prize in Literature, it's an international award, and the Nobel P uh, Prize in Literature he was given, and he was also given a uh, honorary uh, PhD, Doctorate in Literature from Oxford University. So <clears throat> uh, this actually, this is possible for anyone. There's possibility that I, I could also get an honor, honorary uh, degree, an honorary do do doctorate from uh, Oxford University in literature, that's also possible that I could get that. However, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely, <laughs> although it is possible. There is a possibility of that happening, <laughs> but it's very unlikely. So in the same way, Prabhupada uh, gives the example uh, that, that uh, we shouldn't just think that like Rabindranath Tagore, I'll get the, the doctorate just by... Uh, by uh, honorary degree. Uh, it is possible, but it's highly unlikely, so therefore in general everyone goes through the training of the college and passes the examination, and then that way as Prabhupada said, there's certainty, the certainty of attaining the, the goal of Bhava Bhakti. So therefore we practice the sadhana. As Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita, Ananya Cheta Shasatatam Yomam Smarati Nitta Saha Tasyaham Sulabha Parta Nitta Dukta Yogina Because of their constant engagement, Nitta Dukta Yogina uh, in practicing Bhagavad Bhakti, then uh, then Tashaham Sulabha Pata, it's very easy for them to attain me. So by the constant practice of uh, Sadhana Bhakti and uh, Bhagavad Bhakti Nijukta being completely engaged uh, constantly and connected to the Lord through the Sadhana process, then it's certain that one will achieve uh, the, the goal of Bhava Bhakti. Rupa Goswami goes on to explain the astasattvika bhava, the uh, eight uh, different symptoms of bhava bhakti. And Prabhupada comments, in this connection with some unscrupulous neophytes imitating the above symptoms for cheap adoration, not only Vishwana Chakradi, but also Sri Rupa Goswami treats them very critically. Sometimes all of the above eight symptoms of ecstasy are imitated by mundane devotees. So just like we saw Mahaprabhu with the, with the crying and with the shivering and uh, falling unconscious, this astasattvika bhav that Mahaprabhu demonstrated when he arrived in Jagannath Puri Mandir and took darshan of Gopal Rai 
uh, Jagannath Shami, he fell down unconscious. And uh, these symptoms can be imitated, that one can, the, the crying and the uh, unco falling, falling unconscious. And in this way, uh, these uh, Asta Sattva Gabhava that we, we, we see in the Lord and in the character of the uh, great, great uh, exalted Vaishnavas, uh, we don't use to, to actually uh, identify the Bhav Bhaktas because these symptoms can be imitated. Rupa Goswami next described the characteristics of a person who has actually developed his ecstatic love for Krishna. And these characteristics are as follows. So therefore Rupa Goswami gives the nine actual symptoms of a Bhav Bhakta. These are discussed in chapter 18 of Nectar Devotion, the character of one in ecstatic love. And Srila Prabhupada lists these nine genuine symptoms of a Bhav Bhakta to begin his purport on this chapter. Anyarta Kalatvam, Prabhupada explains, he is always anxious to utilize his time in the devotional service of the Lord. He does not like to be idle. He wants service always, 24 hours a day, without devi deviation. Chanti. He is always reserved and perseverant. Birakti. He is always detached from all material attraction. Mana. Shanyata. He does not long for any material respect in return for his activities. Ashabandha. He is always certain that Krishna will bestow his mercy upon him. Shamyutkanta. He is always very eager to serve the Lord faithfully. Nam Gan Shadaru Chi. He is very much attached to the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Ashakti. Tad guna kyane. He is always eager to describe the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Priti tad bhashiti shtale. He is very pleased to live in a place where the Lord's pastimes are performed. For example, Mathura, Vrindavan, or Dwarka. In the subsequent pages of the chapter, Shura Prabhupada explains uh, further detail on the different nine, actual nine, systems of, nine symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. And in general, Prabhupada emphasizes the rareness of Bhava Bhakti. On page 139, he's explaining, It is said by Rupa Goswami that the attachment exhibited by pure devotees to Krishna cannot be perfected in the hearts of fruitive workers or mental speculators because such attachment in pure Krishna consciousness is very rare and not possible to achieve even for many liberated persons. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, liberation from material contamination at this stage at which devotional service can be achieved. For a person who simply wants to have liberation and to merge into the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, attachment to Krishna is not possible to acquire. This attachment is very confidentially kept by Krishna and is bestowed only upon pure devotees. Even ordinary devotees cannot have such pure attachment for Krishna. When we consider the nine genuine symptoms of Bhavati as delineated by Srila Rupa Goswami, we can understand that we are actually quite uh, a distance uh, uh, f uh, f from the Bhav Bhakti platform and uh, we're progressing in devotional life. However, uh, we do on occasion sometimes see devotees demonstrating some of the symptoms of Bhav Bhakti, just like, for example, devotees may on occasion shed tears in their practice of devotional service. We may see this on occasion on, on ceremonies like Vyas Puja, when devotees speak uh, aspects of Vaidhi Sadhana like Guru Pada Asrai, their uh, realizations and their shelter at the lotus feet of their uh, res respective uh, gurus. And uh, they oftentimes are overwhelmed, overwhelmed. So that's experiencing these feelings, uh, that's not, that's not that, that type of experience is not is not mundane tears. These types of tears are obviously not mundane if one is feeling the emotional sentiment in remembering a departed Vaishnava or the relationship one has with one's spiritual master. These are spiritual relationships and if they induce tears then those types of that, that experience is a, a spiritual emotion and uh, we can perhaps we can perhaps consider that those types of experiences fall into the category that Shura Rupa Goswami now describes 
and Srila Prabhupada explains on the next page of his purport, uh, it's described as imitative attachment or roti abhas. And Srila Prabhupada explains, sometimes it is found that a person actually attached to material enjoyment or salvation, uh, that means that they're not actually qualified to be uh, on the level of bhava because they're still have some material contamination there. They, they may have a desire for material enjoyment or they may have desire for liberation. However, he has the good fortune to associate with pure devotees while they are engaged in chanting the holy name of the Lord. At that time, simply by the association of such pure devotees, the moon-like rays from their hearts reflect on him. And by the influence of the pure devotees, he may show some likeness of attachment. So particularly, Prabhupada's analogy here is so beautiful. The moon-like rays from their hearts may reflect on him. So similarly, in, tups, in, in such programs like we were sharing, the, where the great assembly of Vaishnavas, the Vaishnava Shomelon, and if we're discussing the relationships with, uh, of shelter at the lotus feet of one's spiritual preceptors, or we're discussing our remembrance of great Vaishnava charges who we associated with and have sub subsequently entered the Prakat Lila and no longer present on the planet. And uh, we may be generating the, uh, we're, uh, the sentiments, uh, and the sentiments are already there. The Prabhupada says the moonlike rays, moonlike rays from the heart of the divine souls who are all there to worship and to take the association of that great Vaishnava. So in such uh, uh, in such assemblies of uh, pure Vaishnavas, then these symptoms may manifest. By the association of pure devotees, attachment for Krishna can be aroused. But if one commits an offense at the lotus feet of a devotee, one's shadow attachment or para attachment can be extinguished. Rupa Goswami now goes on to discuss Prema Bhakti. And Srila Prabhupada examines this in chapter 19 of the Nectar Devotion, Devotional Service in Pure Love of God. Srila Prabhupada writes, When one's desire to love Krishna in one's particular relationship becomes intensified, this is known as pure love of Godhead. Let's read the Sanskrit verse that Srila Prabhupada translates here, uh, which was composed by Srila Rupa Goswami, describing Prema Bhakti, Pure love of Godhead. Samyan Mashrita Svanto Mama Svati Shayan Kitaha Bhava Shaeva Shandratama Budhai Prema Nigatyate. When that Bhava softens, the heart completely becomes endowed with a great feeling of possessiveness in relation to the Lord and becomes very much condensed and intensified. It is called Prema, love of Godhead. By learned scholars. Srila Prabhupada's commenting. He'll not expose himself, but if you attain the stage of prema, then you will see him. How you will see? Sadaiva, always. Not that for two minutes I see Krishna and uh, is, more, is no more there. No, not like that. Premanjana charita bhakti chanena. Shanta shadaiva. Shadaiva means constant, incessant. If you attain the stage of prema, then you will see him, Prabhupada's explaining. That's prema bhakti. This pure love can be transferred to the Supreme Personality of Godhead under two conditions. Out of ecstasy and out of courseless mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. So similarly, as we were discussing, that one can by practicing sadhana, awaken bhava, and then that is the onset of prema. Or alternatively, one can simply be awarded prema directly by a prema bhakta, process by a prema bhakta, or by directly by a prema bhakta, or directly by the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. Rupa Goswami goes on to describe the two types of prema. So one who awakens prema or achieves prema by practicing Bhaiti Sadhana Bhakti, awakening Bhava, uh, achieves Prema, that is the Vaikuntha Prema, or Mahatma Gyan Prema, that is love of Godhead like the residents of Vaikuntha, who have realization that 
that uh, Vakuntanat is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And they have love for him, complete love for him. That was awakened by practice of sadhana, awakening bhava and prema, and they achieve a Vaikunta Lok, a Vaikunta Mukti, Vaikunta Siti, and uh, there in the in a form a form like that of the Lord, a four arm form, they worship Sri Hari. That's called Mahatma Gyan Prema, understanding that that Sri Hari is the supreme personality of Godhead, and they are his servants. Now. If one practices Raganuga Sadhana, here we can see particularly the importance of cultivating Raganuga Sadhana and uh, how Srila Rupa Goswami very mercifully has included this as a standard process for those uh, following the uh, guidelines that he <coughs> has given us. That by practicing Raganuga Sadhana and developing Bhava, Raganuga Sadhana means cultivating the sentiment of the Higher rushes, as we see in Brindavan Dham, the Shakya Rash, Shakya Rash, Bhatsalya Rash, Mudurja Rash, by practicing sadhana, following in the footsteps of the Ragatmaka Bhaktas, who are expert, who are the personifications of these various mellows, uh, and following in their footsteps and developing Bhavra and then Prema, Braja Prema. And that type of prema, Rupa Goswami describes as kevala prema. Mahabrabhu also in his teachings to Rupa Goswami, he uses the term kevala prema. And the difference being that in kevala prema, uh, there is no conception of the Aishwarya Gyan that is there in the Vaikuntha prema. In the Vaikuntha prema, the prema bhaktas who have prema, they love Sri Hari and they understand that he is the supreme Bhagavan, the supreme personality of Godhead. But in Vrindavan, where the sentiments of paternity and uh, sakya, uh, friendship, and modurya ras prevail, there there is no sentiment of the opulence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, uh, they, uh, Aisharja Dekleo, Mahaprabhu is explaining to Rub Goswami that Aisharja Dekleo, even on occasion where uh, Nanda Dulal, he, he manifests his opulence as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Arsharja Dek Leo, Nijashambandha The Brajabhasis uh, are never disturbed in their intimate relationship. The example that Sriman Mahaprabhu gives to Srila Rupa Goswami in his connection was Jasodamar, when uh, Sri Krishna and Baladev returned from the pasturing grounds, and at that time the cowherd boys mentioned to Majasoda that this morning Krishna ate clay. And Yasoda was very concerned. And when she questioned Krishna, Krishna, he denied that and said, no, this is just some story of Balaram and, and the other cowherd boys. They, they're, they're conspiring against me today and uh, they're, making, they're making up these stories. It's not true. So Mother Yasoda, she called Baal Gopa. She said, yeah, let me see. Come sit on my lap. And uh, she looked into the mouth of Gopal and she saw the uh, Birat Rup, the Visha Rup, the universal form and all of the uh, planetary systems and all of the elements, the Pradhan, and she even saw uh, Bharat, uh, Brindavan and her, herself sitting there with Krishna and all that. So momentarily after that uh, darshan of the Vishwarup darshan, momentarily, Majasoda at that time began philosophical consideration. And she, she thought, why am I wasting my life in household life? <laughs> but <laughs> this is very momentary. momentary. And then again she said, oh, you lady, this is your child. You have to look after him, feed him. And then the Nija Sambandha Shemani. So even Krishna displays pastimes which would, uh, uh, which would induce the Brajabhasis to recognize him as the su supreme Godhead. Uh, even though there may be some flickering sen sentiment of that, uh, uh, Nija Sambandha. It doesn't overwhelm their Nija Sambandha, their uh, personal, intimate relationship with Krishna in Vrindavan. So this is Kevala Prem. And of course, uh, as Chakravati Thakur explains, that the Ramna Kachit Upashana, Ramna Kachit Upashana, what is the most pleasing Ramna Kachit Upashana of uh, worship of the, the Supreme Lord, that uh, Aradda Bhagavan Brajaya Shatana Yastadama Vrindavanam, the Aradda Bhagavan, the most worshipable form of the Supreme Lord, Chakravati Thakur explains, Aradda Bhagavan. Uh, Tat Dharma Brinda Aradra Bhagavan Brajesha Tanayo Brajesha the, the king of Braj Tanayo his darling son 
Tatdama Vrindavanam, and his, his dham is, his residence is Vrindavan. Ramnakachi Rupashana, what is the most type of pleasing, the most pleasing? Uh, kachit, what is the most pleasing Upashana, type of worship? Ramna, what is the most pleasing? Brajabadu Bhagena that which is performed by the uh, residents of Vrindavan. Because that type of service where where uh, Nanda Dulal is worshipped just as the, the cowherd boy and as the uh, Bhangshi Dadi, the flute player, and as the dancer, uh, uh, Gobijana Balap, and not as the Supreme Lord. Uh, that is the most uh, pleasing type of uh, I- I- association and service uh, to the Lord and most intimate. Satya Brata Muni writes that Iti Drik. Seeing these leelas where uh, Maya Soda is chasing Gopal with a, with, a, with a stick to chastise him. And Rudantam Muhu Netra Yugmam Rijantam, he's rubbing his eyes. And the Maskara is, 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 uh, is running down his eyes uh, and with his two little, little fists as he's rubbing his eyes. Muhu Shasha Kampa And his, his neck is, is quivering. But out of fear, Jashodabhi Odukala Davamanam, Jashodabhi, out of fear of Mother Yasoda. He's actually afraid, and Mother Yasoda is, is angry and chasing after him. Iti Drik Shalilabhi, Ananda Kunde, when the, when the, the residents, when the Swagosham, when, his, when the Brajabasi see these pastimes, Iti Drik Shalilabhi, Ananda Kunde, it merges them into the pools of bliss. Ananda Kunde, hmm. Iti Jikshali Rabi Ananda Kundei Sagosham Nimajantam Akyapaya Nimajantam. They merge into oceans of bliss. So, this is the topmost relishable experience of love of Godhead. Where there's no obligation, uh, we're serving you because you're God and we are offer up. No, we're enjoying with you and you're the most enchanting, the most wonderful, the most attractive. Uh, 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 village boy in Vrindavan. And this is Braja Prem. This is Kevala Prem, as Rupa Goswami is describing as being the ultimate uh, state of love of Godhead, as Chaitanya Mahababhu is bestowing upon humanity, Krishna Prem Pradayade, through the Shankirtan movement. And Rupa Goswami is his principal uh, curriculum writer and uh, trainee supervisor, and he's uh, giving us the, this, this analysis of the different states of love of Godhead and how the Vrindavan Prema, the Braja Prema that Mahaprabhu is uh, come to give is, is the ultimate, topmost experience of love of Godhead. On, towards the end of the chapter 19, just before we conclude our study of the Purva Vibhag of the Bhakti Rashamrita Sindhu, Srila Prabhupada is paraphrasing Rupa Goswami's concluding uh, Analysis of the stages from Shraddha to Prema. Srila Prabhupada comments, Although many different processes for developing love of God have been explained so far, Srila Rupa Goswami now gives us a general description of how one can best achieve such a high position. The beginning of ecstatic love of Godhead is basically faith. And Srila Prabhupada, he paraphrases the different items from Shraddha, Sharushanga, Bhajana Kriya, Anarta Nibriti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and Prema. When, when he is freed from unwanted occupations, that's number four here, just the last few lines summarized quickly. When he is freed from unwanted occupations, Anarta Nibriti, his faith becomes steadily fixed, that's Nishta. He develops transcendental taste for devotional service, Ruchi. Then attachment, Ashakti. Then ecstasies, bhava, and in the last stage, pure love of Godhead, prema. These are the different stages of development of pure love. Srila Prabhupada comments, Only the most fortunate persons can achieve such success in life. Lord Shiva therefore tells Parvati, My dear Supreme Goddess, you may know from me that any person who has developed the ecstasy of love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead and is always merged in transcendental bliss on account of this love, cannot even perceive the material distress or happiness coming from the body or the mind. So in this way we've concluded our study of the Purva Vibhag 
of the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and the first 19 chapters of the Nectar Devotion. Let's conclude our study with this comment from Srila Prabhupada. The Nectar Devotion will teach us how to turn on the one switch that will immediately brighten everything everywhere. One who does not know this method is missing the point of life. Srila Prabhupada Ki.